And welcome back to our program. Hey, what an election day we had this last Tuesday up in Washington, D.C., Lower Virginia, the 7th Congressional District of Virginia. Eric Cantor is about the third most powerful guy in all of America. He's the House Majority Leader, and he gets upset by a Tea Party candidate who is virtually unknown. Let me tell you how to touch uh, Cantor was. This Tea Party candidate spends $122,000 to take on the House Majority Leader. Guy can't get beat. I mean, this is Mr. Republican. He travels all over the country in favor of the Republicans. Obviously, his district must love him with all that power and incumbency, right? He gets shellacked. He gets beat overwhelmingly by like 14 or 15 points by this Tea Party Republican. Let me tell you about the guy that beat him. He's a professor at Randolph-Macon University. He spent $122,000. Cantor spent $5 million. The guy that beat him, uh, rather, Cantor spent more money on steak dinners than the guy that beat him spent in the entire campaign. So you wonder, what the heck is going on? Is there a big revolution happening in this country? And uh, some people say it was the Tea Party response. Uh, Cantor had been a little wishy-washy on the immigration issue. First, he was all against it. Then he said, well, to bring the Republicans into the 21st century, we got to give on immigration. And that wishy-washiness hurt to some degree. But I'll tell you the real reason. The guy just lost contact. Election day, he was not in the district. Most of the last year, he was not in the district. He just took the district for granted. Two years ago, he gets 78% of the vote. He comes back home regularly. He only lives in Virginia, rather, uh, in, in Washington, D.C. He can, can commute back and forth to work, but he doesn't do so. He's traveling all over the country, uh, raising money for other Republicans, wants to be the not only the majority leader, but Speaker of the House. That would be the next job that John Boehner has. So he wanted to be Speaker of the House one day, so he's making up all these IOUs but he let his politics go. Let me tell you something about politics. At any level, it's local, down to the local level. You gotta deal within the locality of where you're elected. And so many members of Congress who are getting beat who are in real trouble right now have forgotten that lesson. It came down to the ABCs, anybody but Cantor. That was the flow that was going through the seventh district. We never see the guy, he never comes back home. He was aloof. And there's some lessons there for lots of other candidates coming up here this fall. Now, if you listen to my show regularly, you know I'm not a big incumbent, rather a big fan of incumbents. We've seen them go to Washington, D.C. We've had this stalemate up in Washington, D.C., and nothing is getting done. That's a good lesson. If you're down in my home state of Louisiana, we got a hot race for U.S. Senator incumbent Mary Lander has been there forever. She's the chairman of the House, uh, rather the Senate Energy Committee, and all she's this most powerful Ms. Mrs. Chairman. Uh, chairman. And she says we should re-elect her because of all of her power. Nobody cares about power anymore. Look at Cantor. He was the third most powerful guy in America in that position. Nobody cared about him. He got ousted because he didn't pay attention to what the local folks needed. They wanted some response. They wanted to see him. They wanted to be able to touch their congressman. And Cantor didn't do it. I can tell you what, if you live down here in my home state of Louisiana, same thing is going on. You've got Landrew, who lives in a $4 million house up in Washington, D.C., never comes home, not seen her in several years, very few people have seen her, and then her incumbent, Congressman Bill Cassidy, he's a congressman from where I live in the 6th Congressional District, he's pretty much out of touch. He's running all over America, raising money from all these various groups to beat Landrew. Doesn't come back home. He's out of touch. Got a Tea Party candidate down here, uh, Rob Manus, pretty good guy who's going to surprise a lot of people with the vote he's going to get. And I think there's going to be a response or a negative response to both the incumbent Landrew and the congressman because they've forgotten their retail politics. They're not back home. They're not taking care of their business. So interesting lesson. This is one of the biggest upsets we've seen. No majority leader has been defeated in Congress in the last 200 years. Very power position. People are saying, we don't care. We want to bring it back local to us. You're spending too much money, you're traveling too much, you're not coming back home and dealing with the issues that are important to us. 
We're not high on immigration. A lot of these issues came into play to some degree, but the big issue was he didn't come back home. Good lessons for lots of incumbents. Good lessons for you and me, too. Look, you better have a pretty darn good reason to vote for any incumbent this time around because you can put, quite frankly, as I said repeatedly, put Republicans, Democrats in a, in a sack, shake them up. It wouldn't matter how who you pulled out when it came to being responsive in Washington, D.C. Money-wise, dealing with so many issues that are on the back burner, getting us in trouble all over the world. We've got to do some shaking up up there. Didn't bother me that Cantor got beat. I hope we see lots of upsets coming up here this fall. I'll be right back.